Hello fantastic people, I hope you're doing great. Today we'll be creating Fusrodach from Skyrim. So the scene consists of three main elements. The table with uh, props, so every single item over here has just a mesh, rigid body and a simple collider on them. So nothing uh, fancy over there. Then over here I have um, empty object with capsule collider and simple FPS uh, movement script, which is not part of this uh, tutorial, so nothing to worry about. And then also this Dragonborn character, which was created uh, and rigged in Blender, and then animated using the animations from uh, Mixamo. Also, the character has the rigid body and simple collider, exactly the same way as the props do. Um, but also the rig has the animator, which plays the um, idle animation. Okay, so first, uh, under the hero object, so the player one, we want to create an empty object and call it Shout Zone. We'll use this object to mark the area of um, the Shout influence. Now we add Box Collider to it, and then we simply um, adjust it to be covering the area we want. So we know here's our character, so obviously we want to make it a little bit wider, uh, much longer and a little bit higher and then we can also adjust the offset. Now we have to add uh, a script to it. Let's call it uh, shout. First we need a list to store the references of the objects that we'll want to um, affect. Then uh, we need to go back to Unity and make sure that the box um, collider we added, so the one marking the zone, has the is trigger checkbox uh, checked. We go back to the code and implement on trigger enter and on trigger exit. Now, on trigger enter, we want to grab the rigid body from the, uh, from the object. And now, only if the object has the rigid body, so if that reference or this variable doesn't equal to null, we want to add it to the list. And on trigger exit, we want to do the reverse thing. We want to remove it from the list. This will give us a list of objects that um, are in the shout zone, so pretty convenient. Now we just need to make sure this list is uh, initialized and we can start implementing the actual shout. For that, we'll need another variable, this time it's realized, which will store the information about the um, force of the shout. And let's default it maybe to 700. Now we implement our update method, and inside of it, we check if the um, attack button has been pressed. First, from each object in the list, so for each game object we want to try to get its rigid body. And because we are sure it has the rigid body, we can directly um, add force to it. So this will be very easy, we use the uh, add explosion force, which accepts several param parameters. So first one will be the, uh, the force, then the second one will be where 
um, the explosion originates from so that will be the position of the player of the character so here we'll have transform position then for explosion radius we can um, give something around 15 or maybe more this should be probably variable um, this basically will be how big uh, would be will be the area affected and then the last one um, is basically if we want to add any extra force upwards um, and we want I think value around 2 works nicely. Okay, so this should give us very basic um, version of this shout. Let's try it. Yay! Okay, so we have the initial version working. Now, our character is still animating, so that's definitely not something we want we'll add ragdoll to it so in order to add ragdoll to character we have to make sure it is facing the forward direction so the blue arrow so i'm changing the um, the rotation to zero and then i'm going to game object 3d object ragdoll and this op opens this so basically what I have to do, I have to grab um, bones of my character and have to assign them to all of those fields. Sometimes you will not have all the bones um, that you need, so you have to try to get it as closely as possible. Um, so for example, I don't have a bone for left, hips, but, uh, for left hip, but the bone, uh, upper leg bone will be enough for me. Okay, I have all the bones assigned and now what I need to do, I click this button create. What this did for each of the bones, um, it created some extra components. So you see all of them have now rigid body, character joint uh, and the collider. So this is important to remember because we'll have to handle that. Um, if we would try now to start the game, the character will just start jumping around. And that's because the collider that we added at the very beginning is basically colliding with all those colliders on the different um, joints or different bones. So let's handle that. We create script and call it enemy. And the main idea is that normally during the game we want the ragdoll to be disabled and the regular collider and animator and so on enabled. And when the character, um, when we shout at the character, we want uh, the ragdoll to be enabled. So I assign the script to the character and open it. First, I would like to store the references to the um, main components on the parent object. So private collider. Then I will create a method that will allow us to enable and disable the ragdoll. So let's assume this is true. So if we want to enable the um, ragdoll, then we have to make sure that our animator is disabled. That means if this is true, here we want false, so that means we have to inverse it. Then we also want to disable the collider. Then we also want to disable the main um, rigid body. We do that using the is kinematic. And here, because we disable it when the kinematic is set to true, we simply put value, so we don't reverse it. So this will be, if here is true, then here will be false, false, true. And now we have to um, find the elements on each join and disable them or enable them when needed. So those two types of components that we'll have to um, adjust are colliders and rigid bodies. So first let's start with rigid bodies. So for each rigid body in get components in children of type rigid body. Uh, this doesn't like me for each. 
And then, first thing we have to do, we have to check that this rigid body is not the rigid body on the main uh, character. So on the parent level, um, because the get component in children returns also uh, on, so not only the children components, but also um, the components on the parent. So if it is not the main rigid body, we want to uh, set the is kinematic to the mm, opposite value of this one. So we, for example, if we disable the main one, we want to enable the mm, the ragdoll rigid bodies. So we have to make sure this is reversed. And then we do exactly the same thing for the colliders. And now we have to use the enabled and as previously the Mm, this should not be reversed. So basically, if we disable this uh, collider, we have to enable those ones. Now, because our animator is not on the uh, parent object, but on the uh, one of the children, let's allow it to input it manually. This will be the easiest way. So I'm just creating, making it uh, serialized. Now, we have to create the awake method and inside of the awake method we want to grab the collider and also the rigid body. Then we also want to call the use ragdoll and at the beginning we don't want to use it. We want to use the regular rigid body and the regular collider. Now we have to move to our sh shout class and when we call um, when we get the rigid body from each object we also want to try to get the um, enemy component and if enemy is not null we want to call the use ragdoll and set it to true. Now you will see we have a small problem. Let's just assign the animator and let's see the issue and shouting at it. Okay, so the ragdoll was enabled as expected, but the force wasn't applied. And why is that? That's because um, when we grab the rigid body over here, we grab the rigid body from the main component, from the parent component. And unfortunately, we disable it. So now we have to indicate which which rigid body we want to use. So on our enemy, we can create um, another serialized field. Or maybe let's not make it serialized because we'll have to use it in another script. So in order to do that we just create a public rigid body and um, ragdoll and let's call it ragdoll rigid body and now inside of our shout if the enemy is not null then instead of using the regular rb we will use the enemy ragdoll rigid body and over here called the add explosion force. Let's copy the parameters and let's add else here. For our ragdoll rigid body, let's select uh, the spine one. So the one that will be in the middle of the character. So let's assign it over here. And now let's test it out. So we see it is working, but it is really, really um, light. So the same over here, you see we add force to all these small objects and it works, but for big objects and a little bit heavier like the table, it is not that satisfying. So let's adjust that. Let's create another um, script and call it force modifier. And now inside of it, we just want to put one 
float variable, public one, called mod. And we can default it to, for example, five. Now, inside our shout script, we also want to try to get it over here. And now, instead of using the raw force, we can create another variable and let's do force times force modifier mod. And now this could throw us an error in case the force modifier is not there, so if the object doesn't have it. So first we have to mm, check if the force modifier is there. So if it is not an all, then use that, otherwise use just force. And now when we call the add explosion force, we use our new variable instead. Let's add the scripts to different objects, so for example this one the table, the other chair, and of course, the character. Now, on the character, let's increase it significantly to something like 20. And now let's test it out. Don't forget to like this video and comment, and of course, subscribe to my channel. Have a fantastic day, love you, and bye bye.